Hi guys. So I'm on day 15 now of quitting weed. Um, been really easy, remarkably easy, much easier than the last time. Probably because I've already, you know, gone through it and everything. But I, I went through it before, so it's uh, it's easy this time around. I don't know. I think the psychological aspect is is uh, way way less than it was before, basically, um, because I kind of know what to expect and I know that it's not like a big deal and. I kind of this time I have it in my head that um, a lot of the things that you feel emotionally dependent on weed for it doesn't really provide or at least it's not you know the only way you can get those things um, so for example one of the things I always used to have was uh I always wanted to smoke weed before dinner and I always wanted to smoke weed before watching TV and I always wanted to smoke weed before playing a computer game and I always wanted to smoke weed before uh, working on music or listening to music or whatever. And, you know, if I was taking the dog out, for example, I'd usually listen to music, so I'd want to smoke weed before that. And, you know, everything kind of was associated with weed and I felt like weed was integral to all of these activities. And... Um, I learned, I already kind of knew this, but I learned last time I quit that that's really silly and um, the only, well, the music thing, yeah, there's something there, like, you know, it's definitely, in, in some respects, it enhances music and creativity. Uh, it doesn't mean that it doesn't have any drawbacks in that regard, though, because I think it does definitely as well. Um but that's a that's an area where you could make a stronger argument for you know the benefits of weed. Also, the kind of uh, the effect it has on your imagination. I don't know. I, yeah, like I, I, especially if I start again after having not smoked for a while, I do find my imagination becomes more interesting in some ways. Um, all of the other things in terms of enjoying TV, dinners, all of this shit. Uh, I actually think it's better without weed. It's much easier, especially because I don't have the hassle of thinking, oh, you know, the TV show's ready. Time for me to have a bong or, you know, the meal's ready. I'm going to have a bong before the meal. Um, so from that point of view, it's it's uh, it's just less of a hassle. And I don't know, yeah, I'm really enjoying my food and really enjoying everything I'm, you know, my leisure time. Uh I think those are much more dependent on, for example, getting a healthy sleep and eating well and being in a good frame of mind. Those will have a much bigger effect on your enjoyment of those activities than weed. And weed often present, prevents you from sleeping well or being healthy or being in a good frame of mind. So, yeah, for me, that aspect has been uh, just non-existent, basically. You know, um, it hasn't been an issue. Uh, one of the other benefits is the sort of hesitancy. I would find that I had a lot of hesitancy in my life, like about things I was doing. I would, I would kind of, uh, I feel hesitant a lot about doing things and I had this general, I, you know, the older I got, the less I had like really pronounced weed anxiety. Like I stopped having really terrible kind of anxiety from it. when I was younger. I'd sometimes, especially if I picked up like, sativas you know without really wanting to but it was just what was available I'd smoke these like strong sativas and I'd just go into such a bad place mentally and I think one of the underrated or not underrated but overlooked aspects of that it's not just the anxiety it's depression as well probably the anxiety leads to depression because of a spike in cortisol makes you feel depressed afterwards you get the initial kind of uh, like anxious kind of cortisol feeling and then later on or shortly afterwards you feel typically quite depressed and it carries over and the effect is kind of amplified over extended periods of time and I started to notice this after a while like back when I was smoking a lot I realized it's making me depressed as well as anxious like like just unhappy you know like not always physically depressed but just unhappy and uncomfortable and the world didn't always feel right and again I mean I kind of moved beyond some of those 
issues with it. I moved beyond, you know, the the really bad anxiety and stuff, but it was always there at a low level. It's like a, you know, like a fridge humming in the background kind of like you're always just, you know, little bit anxious. You're always kind of, you know, in that frame of mind. Um and it's nice to not have that feeling. I, I realise though as well, I mean, yeah, I still have some of those feelings. You know, it's, um, I think weed is scarcely responsible for for the entirety of anybody's anxiety because if, if, if it, for that to be the case, it would mean that you had no anxiety to begin with. And if you were that sort of zen, then weed probably wouldn't even give you anxiety. Do you know what I mean? Like, so I think it takes a, a vulnerability that is in pretty much every single one of us and uh, it kind of exploits that or well, exploits is probably the wrong word, but it, it worsens it anyway. Um, so, uh, yeah, so that's, you know, yeah, I still get, you know, whatever anxious or stressed about things, I guess, you know, I have like physical reactions to things going on around me. I probably don't do enough in general to deal with all of that. Um, it's, but it, I mean, it's not really a problem to be honest. Like it's not, you know, it's not a big issue, but I, I personally would like to be just completely like kind of invulnerable to everything, you know? Um, in some ways I'm getting closer to that. Like I can stay pretty relaxed when in certain situations, like even, you know, recently when I was smoking, I don't know. Yeah. Like. I feel like anxiety has a much less of an effect on me than it used to, basically. Um, I don't know if that's from working out a lot or what, but it just, I don't, I don't get swept up in it. I think because also my heart rate stays like pretty low. So fear and anxiety have not been big problems for me for a while, but regardless, I would like to just, um, I think it's possible, very difficult, and especially if you live in a normal kind of environment and you have a job and you have things that you're trying to do it's very difficult but I think it's possible to live a life where the only emotions that can really get you are like you know grief and loss and like really big powerful unavoidable things that are just you know completely an inexorable part of who you are as a person like you know losing someone you love or something absolutely like catastrophic happening or pure terror you know like you know something really genuinely bad is literally about to happen to you. I, I I don't think there are many people on planet Earth who can sort of um, avoid those emotions. But I do think you can get to a point like where you're pretty much fucking level like all the time in day-to-day life. So I would like to get there. And I think probably... Um, smoking weed all the time makes it harder to do that there's always just a little bit of emotion um i found as well that when i was smoking it would be sometimes quite easy for me to get into a kind of sulk i guess like i was not outwardly angry um but i could just close in on myself very easily if like someone annoyed me I could just become like, you get into this kind of self-perpetuating kind of sulking thing and it becomes harder to, you get, I don't know, it's hard to explain. And and so it kept a lid on me in some ways, uh, kept a lid on me getting angry, but it, it didn't solve the problem. It just meant I would just be like, fuck off, not going to talk about it. I'm just going to go and smoke and kind of bury this feeling and subdue myself and just sit down and feel like shit, basically. Um, I think, I think, I think she says in uh, Melfi, Tony's therapist in Soprano says at one point, depression is rage turned inward and I always thought I stuck out to me that quote because I was just think about it a lot and I never got what she was saying just now saying this I think I can kind of understand what she means I think she's speaking a bit too broadly and generalizing um 
but in some instances, like you you can turn rage inwards basically and, and just make yourself depressed. And I think a lot of people do that. You see people who are like, you know, they're never angry, but they're kind of always angry. And you know, some people where they don't communicate very well. Um, and you can, you can just sense anger in some people who don't ever really fully actively express it, but they're angry. Um, so I think sometimes, yeah, they just turn that anger in on themselves or, or, or they don't direct it at themselves as in, you know, they don't blame themselves, but they just, they hold on to it in a way that as the, you know, adage says, like holding on to anger is like drinking poison and, and waiting for the other person to die. Like, I think a lot of people live lives like that when it comes to anger, like bitterness, you know, resentment. They're not, they're not things that you really express. Um, rage is something you express, but it's bad. You know, the, the, the outward, it's, it's, it, you know, it's not good to keep it in, but that form of outward expression of it is really unhealthy as well. Um, and uh yeah so anyway I, I a couple of times that's one thing i've found since quitting is two incidents one i talked about in the previous video where i had a a dispute with a betting company i felt incredibly angry and little things like that have been kind of irritating me lately like um what was i trying to do i was trying to do something i was trying to set up a vpn or something the other day to watch a tv show i can't remember but I don't know. It's a growing annoyance. I mean, it's like excessive security measures on everything starting to drive me insane, like being treated like a baby, you know, um, you know, things that are designed to protect you and clearly, you know, made by people who couldn't care less about what happens to you. It's not to protect you at all. Um, and it's really annoying, that kind of thing. I, get, I just get increasingly annoyed with being treated like a baby, basically, by companies and stuff and sort of talked down to and treated like a fucking, like, livestock. It's really irritating to me. Um, but I shouldn't have reacted as angrily as I did to it the other day. It was stupid and not nice for people around me. And then the other day... Um, I got very angry in an argument with someone and it was a... It was a legitimate provocation. Like it, it, what happened was wrong, and I what it was, you know, the situation I was put in was not fair. It was, it was, um, it was, uh, it was wrong. Basically, yeah. To put it simply, like it shouldn't have happened. I shouldn't have been in that situation in the first place, and I didn't start it, and it wasn't my fault. But you know, excuses aside, like I got very angry. Um, shouting very loudly I threw a thing I threw like a a tea filter I had in my hand and uh and was like slamming doors and being uh, uh, since living here I haven't been loud at all it was like really loud like probably every neighbor heard it and it was probably like really weird because it was in the daytime and I was just I was being very very loud I was really like my my blood was boiling you know I was just um so angry and, and and again, you know, I was right to be angry, but I wasn't right to do that. I wasn't right to express it in that manner. And it also wasn't healthy for me, like, because my heart rate was through the roof and the adrenaline was really going, you know, and it just felt like, again, after that, I felt depressed afterwards. Like, I felt, until the next morning, I felt depressed. I felt fine the next day, but but for the rest of that night, I just felt like complete shit and I couldn't, you know... I just couldn't focus on anything or enjoy anything. I'd kind of like, you know, worked myself up in some sense. And it's hard to know how to avoid that because it's so instantaneous, you know, like someone does something or says something and you just suddenly feel so fucking angry and kind of hurt, I guess. And, and, uh, it's a very difficult thing. I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know how you really, because, you don't have much time, you know? So like I've made quite a lot of progress in dealing with anxiety because you tend to ruminate on anxious thoughts. So you have a lot of time to get in there and, and talk to yourself. That's what I do a lot is talk to myself in my head. Um, and, uh, 
you can get in there and talk to yourself and be like, all right, well, you know, you were anxious about this a year ago and it never happened or what's the point in being anxious about this or uh, well, what is something, you know, what is something good that might come of this? Or, you know, you can kind of ask yourself questions and prompt yourself and talk to yourself. You don't have much time to do that in a, in a kind of rage situation because it's so instantaneous. Like, you know, it lasts all of like three seconds most of the time because you sort of react and then you're like, oh, fuck, you know. Um, so it's hard to know. Yeah, I don't know. And I feel like probably... In some ways, those situations might have been worse if I was high. Like, I might have, um, I might have, uh, sort of, I don't know, I might have withdrawn even more and kind of, um, began like sulking. They might have become longer, more drawn out, more difficult situations. I don't know. Or it might have taken me days to like kind of, Probably not, to be fair. Like, yeah, but I don't know. Um, but I feel like probably either way, whatever the case, had I been high, I probably would not have reacted in that way exactly. Um, I think to some degree that's just the process of quitting. It's not. It's not. It's not the absence of weed per se. It's just like the kind of withdrawal. So, uh, yeah, hopefully that's the case. Um, but yeah, I'm conscious of the fact, by the way, I seem probably like I'm high now. I'm not. I'm just really tired. I did a big workout and stuff. So I'm just uh, just very tired. I can feel my eyes like closing and stuff. But um, yeah, how psychotic would that be if I was if I was high and I was making videos about quitting weed? <laughs> just completely just gone full Norman Bates. <laughs> just blazed a massive spliff before this. And I'm like, yeah, the thing about quitting weed is... Uh, for no reason as well. There's no no benefit to it. I just just this absurdly elaborate. Well, it's not even an elaborate lie, is it? It's just fucking stupid. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's been great. I, I, I once in a while I have the urge like to have that thing. You know, you want like a thing. But that's that's like pretty much. It's like I don't know a few seconds, and then I'm like, nah, fuck it. Like I don't care. I don't need it. It's not important. Move on. And then everything is just as good, or if not, maybe better than it was. And yeah, it's easier to focus in the evenings. Not not as not as much of a difference as I thought there would be. Um, like uh, by the end of the night, if I've been doing a lot of stuff all day, I'm still pretty tired, uh, you know. And it's like focusing on work can be a bit tricky, uh, or I just feel a bit like my brain is just kind of swimming, and I'm like, oh, I don't really want to do anything. Um, so it hasn't completely changed that, but definitely I do feel like, um, throughout at more times throughout the day, I'm kind of ready to do more things, you know, I feel a bit more like available and I guess I'm sleeping more deeply. I mean, sleep is just inconsistent anyway, but, uh, having a lot more dreams, hell of a lot more dreams, uh, which is all right. I don't know. Um, I think maybe that kind of disrupts my sleep a little bit, but I guess it's also a sign of deep sleep. So, yeah, well, I wouldn't say I feel like I've been sleeping brilliantly, but it's all right. So, yeah, as usual, I would highly recommend quitting to anyone who's considering it. Um, if you're considering it, you just should. I can't say that everyone should quit weed, but everyone who's considering quitting weed should quit weed. That's a fact. And, it, and anyone who has never quit weed before and has smoked for all of their adult life and thinks that it would be difficult to quit or, or or is curious about the benefits of quitting, just do. It's not that hard. Um, and, I mean, if you smoke loads, it's a bit more difficult, but you can just taper off, like, just, you know, give yourself a, a week or so to gradually kind of, like... What, what I found very helpful is for the first, like, few days, I would smoke a bong so small that... I didn't feel it. I didn't, you know, it wasn't, I wasn't high at all, but I think it gave my body just like a bit of whatever it was used to. So I would say that that's probably a good idea for people who smoke loads is like for the first couple of weeks, like every few days, just smoke like a crumb, like a literal crumb, just so that, I don't know, yeah, your body doesn't immediately go from like, you know, fucking two grams a day to zero. 
But otherwise, yeah, I'd highly recommend it. Really worth trying. You never know what you might learn about yourself or the world or discover whilst you're uh, quitting. Um, I started this channel, actually, when I quit weed. Um, and, uh, yeah, I've been, to, you know, it's interested in all sorts of different things lately and uh, more able to focus on them. So that's been cool. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Take care. Bye.